let's talk about the familiar Bali Badugo. So, <laughs> for some reason, I'm just going to start this with this because for some reason, I thought this was going to be a series. Nay, nay, it is a standalone. <laughs> So I read this whole book just thinking it was going to be a series and while I was getting to the end of it I was like how is this book going to be a series because <laughs> it feels like it's being wrapped up so I was so confused I looked it up after obviously and I was like yes standalone I mean the end page is also like yes this is a standalone but I was like I don't know why. Why did I think this was going to be a series and not a standalone? I don't know. I don't know. Where to even begin? So I've heard some mixed reviews um, uh, from people who like love Lee Bardugo. They, they've stated that they like the first Shadow and Bone book and then maybe they read like half the second book. What is the second book called, by the way? Uh, Siege and Storm, that's the one. And then they just never read the third book. But then, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. Me just having to check. I don't remember their name of all the books, okay? Uh, so Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, those, that duology is what people love from Lee Bardugo. And then most people doesn't seem to have read the rest. <laughs> the, what's it called? Uh, the King of Scars and Rule of Wolf um, duology. Now, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Um, why people haven't like finished the whole thing. I read the whole thing. I read all the books and I get it. Um, but then she wrote this so far, it's just two books, but it's a, a it's an ongoing series, the Alex Stern series, which is uh, Ninth House and then now Hellbent, um, both of which I have read, and honestly, I bloody love those books, and I get it, I get the hype, I get the hype, and so we come to the familiar. I love how I've just been holding this book up the whole time anyway so we come to the familiar and people are like yes this is uh a adult fantasy blah 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 um because shadow and bone is ya so is uh the six of crows and all of the rest of those where do ninth house end up i want to say ninth house ends up somewhere between YA and adults, but also me. Yeah. And this one, I'm not even sure I would classify as as adults. I mean, sure, maybe, but okay. Um, it, it there's nothing really that screams this is adult to me. Take it, leave it, do with it as you will. <laughs> I, I I think people were expecting more for this book after Six and Crows and Ninth House, um, the massiveness that those two books, different vibes, but the massiveness that they gave. And apparently people were expecting more from this. Didn't really expect anything. Cause that's usually, <laughs> I try not to expect anything from things because then it can only get better, it can only be good afterwards. Well, it can be bad, but I, I won't just dis be disappointed by it. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> onto the actual book, though. We are in Spain, mostly Madrid, I believe. And we... What's her name? Oh, yeah. This was this thing about the name. So, her name is either Lucia, Lucia. I kept wanting to call her Luisa. It's L-U-Z-I-A. So not Louisa. Maybe I'm a bit dyslexic sometimes. Possibly. Um, <laughs> that was just me. The whole entire book, I was reading her name and being like, Louisa? Why? So she is 
like a maid. Um, she she works in semi grand house. Uh, I mean the house the. Uh, the master and the mistress, as it were. Uh, they aren't of the riches of families, but still they have enough to have two servants, a cook and then Lucia. <laughs> Lucia. <laughs> Lucia as uh, the maid of the house. And pff, honestly, she seems to spend more time in the kitchen than anywhere else, at least during her time as the maid. So, Lucia, <laughs> she has this ability. She has, uh, I don't know, um, I'm not really sure I want to call it. it. It's called something, it's it's a form of magic, but it's called something spe specific, apparently, Um, because uh, we meet other people who has some magic ability-ishness, uh, and they're talents is called something else. I can't say the word. Also, I don't remember it and it's not in the beginning of it, so... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, she has a bit of magic, so she does little tricks to, well, get through the day. Make the food instead of just one egg she so she goes down to the town to buy food and then she comes back and like she has one egg but she does a little singy song and all of a sudden she has 10 eggs um yeah it's little things like that fix a seam on a dress make the bread not burnt tiny little things um and then harm harmless things but <laughs> As it were, the mistress of the house notices um, something amiss. Uh, she figures out that Lucia has this magic ability, so, you know, being a mistress that doesn't really have a lot of money to go around and be all that fancy, rich person, person, um, she starts to take advantage of her Lucia's ability, her magic ability, and makes her, well, perform at dinner parties and such. It all leads to Lucia eventually being invited to this, uh, what was his thingy? So he was like an advisor, something to the king, I've forgotten, okay? Literally, I read it and it blew out of my mind. So she's invited to this place for let's say Bob. <laughs> His name wasn't Bob. Um, and he was like some advisor to the king and such. But he was discredited in one way, shape or form. And now Bob, um, <laughs> I can't keep calling him that, but yeah. So Bob, um, he wants to, you know, get the, uh, get the king's approval, praises, uh, what not, again. Um, so he kind of invites all these um, magical ability persons uh, to somehow <laughs> get the approval of the king again. I'm not really sure how that is, was supposed to work out. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense when you think about it, but... <laughs> I mean, it was a, it was a fun time. It was fun seeing like, so th the thing is when she's at this Bob person's place, um, her, Lucia and the other magic people um, are kind of in competition with each other and they are supposed to like perform different, well, <laughs> I guess tasks um, from what their ability abilities can do. Um, just showing off, basically. Doing a little showmanship. <laughs> what am I even talking about anymore? I don't know. Um, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, the plot of the story doesn't really make all that much sense. Um, but honestly, I thought it was quite funny. There are scenes, so there's this scene where, um, I'm not going to say who it is or anything like that, but some person gets like thrown over a cliff 
and then a fish eats all, like um one of the jewels from this person and this fish is then fished up <laughs> caught by a fisherman and then like skidded out and skidded out what i don't know I'm cut up and you know this person who finds this fish is now like a rich person and then we see them going off to like france and starting a perfumery was that what you did i don't remember honestly it was like this random character um that has no like effect to the story uh, or the plot in any way shape or form it was just very random bit and we get like that person's whole life story um honestly i found that hilarious <laughs> i found that quite funny um it makes no sense for the plot or you know the story at hand but it was a good time plot wise i'm it doesn't make much sense, but it's still a good time. I like the writing in it. I liked some of the characters and some of the other and some of the characters. Some of the characters I liked. Some of the characters I kind of just want to strangle because they are such manipulative idiots. And yeah, honestly, also looking at this cover like so close on. Um, first off, my finger fingers are making loads of fingerprints on here, that's, it's because it's that kind of velvety-ish, um, paper. Um, but looking at this hand, this close up, it looks, <laughs> it looks quite bad. Um, I mean, it looks like a terrible rendition and it's way too pixelated. Who? What? You know you can make these like porcelain hands because I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be like an old papery-ish porcelain hand. Um, you can make it actually look good but this looks way too pixelated up close. Whereas the scorpion here um, looks very good. I mean I guess there's some point to it but yeah. I do really like the end papers though. The pomegranates does make sense to the story. Um, it's not a main driven plot line, but it's still funny. Um, yeah. That was the familiar for me. <laughs> Did that make any sense? Probably not, but when do I ever make sense?